The Four Horsemen of Survivor Fiji may be one of the best alliances of all time. Usually, an alliance has some success and has one of their players win the game, or if the alliance gets bested, it can be due to better play by the opposing alliance. We saw this happen in the Australian Outback where Kucha had the game in the bag going into the merge, but a better play by the Oga Course at the merge ended up doing them in. So for the Four Horsemen, it is basically a comedy of errors by some dude bros cleverly disguised as some of the best gameplay I've ever seen. Oh, you think I'm being sarcastic for laughs? Would a sarcastic man label these four players as the best of all time? I don't think so. By the way, thanks for watching, commenting, and subscribing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, like this one, watch all of this channel's content early, and even get exclusive videos every month. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 19 people, one survivor. Let's get right into this as it is episode six and with Ravu being the tribe that just can't win anything without it being handed to them, due in part to their subpar living conditions compared to the Moto tribe who literally has a canopy bed, this tribe swap might save their hide. Might. Two people are then assigned to draft new tribes, those being Earl for Moto and Edgardo for Ravu. By the end of the draft, we see Ravu consisting of Rocky, Anthony, Mookie, Alex, Dreams, and of course, Edgardo. Lisi is not selected for either tribe, and this will be important at a later date. Lisi, never good to be odd person out. You are, however, still in the game. Oh, geez. Were you worried? No, I thought this would be like, I'm out. <laughs> now would be a good time to exit. <laughs> well, so I guess you just told these guys that you're fine going home. All I'm saying is that and I wouldn't mind, you know, saying, okay, great, guys. <laughs> Do your business. What you may have noticed upon me reading off those names is how Moto is a good mixture of ages and sexes, whereas Ravu is all men. On paper, all men seems amazing for challenges, and uh, if that seems like it's the case, it's because it's true they're gonna win every single challenge, and if they don't, it's because it's strategically smart for them to do so. But at the Ravu beach, we see the four horsemen come together as Alex initiates this for himself, Mookie, Edgardo, and Dreams. Bad dreams. I'm good. Good. It was supposed to be Anthony gone next. Cause he's just so weak. He he has no backbone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So Rocky called him out and he almost cried. Alright, so we're in this? Or I'm good. Yeah. No man. All right. Anthony nor Rocky are included in this alliance. Anthony because he's basically viewed as a nerd and Rocky because he's Dreams as rival. So neither are selected for this elite club of amazing individuals. Right after the four horsemen unite to ride together and destroy all others who get in their way, they catch a bunch of fish and celebrate. What a strong start. Rocky says this tribe is a superpower. We cannot be stopped. So we go to the immunity challenge, where Ravu is clearly going to make Moto look like a bunch of weaklings for not picking all men. Moto wins immunity! Yeah. Or maybe they lose by inches, but tomato, tomato, they meant to do that, of course. Since they lost, anyone they vote out will be replaced by Lisi, so they won't lose numbers overall, and now I'm seeing the bigger picture. But what they will lose is the big nerd on their team who does not fit into their dude Bro Alliance. Get Anthony out of here. Anthony, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Good. Episode 7 sees Lisi arriving to join the Ravu tribe of muscles and manliness, and we are told she kind of fits in with them since she is more of the type of woman you watch football with and bump chests, not a dainty girl you take to fine dining and marry. That's not my definition of who you marry, that's their definition. However, there is one person who doesn't care too much for her dreams. He says he's never liked Lisi, and she has never liked him, so she should be worried. But at the reward challenge, in the usual fashion, Ravu dominates Moto and wins. Yeah! Yeah! Ravu wins their first challenge! What did I tell you? They can't be stopped. When they want to win, they want to win. They win a trip to an arcade where they get to play pool, do some bowling, and eat a whole lot of hot dogs. You know, manly things. Rocky even says, what a bunch of idiots. You all got sick from eating hot dogs. What are you, a bunch of wusses? Come on, I'm starving, right? I was sitting on the grass in the dirt. Everyone was talking about chocolate chip I'm ice starving. cream. You know, now they're nice. all rolling on the couch. Oh, my stomach. So I started making fun of them. 
oh, I'm gonna eat 19 hot dogs and I'm gonna eat 17 brownies because they were running their mouth. Rocky just put himself at the top of the four horsemen's hit list, but no worries, immunity time. Ravu once again lays the smack down on Moto and makes them pay for not making an all-male tribe. Cannibal Isles is correct! Oh! Or not, back at camp they discuss that with the merge coming up, we need loyal players, more so than strong ones, aka we want Lisi over Rocky. As it turns out, while Lisi was on exile for not being picked to any tribe, she got a lot of clues as to where the idol is on their beach. So she shares that with the alliance that she knows is about to dominate this game, the Four Horsemen. They agree to look for it together with her, but first, Rocky is voted out for just not being loyal enough. Rocky, tribe is spoken. Good boys, huh? Episode 8 sees the alliance that is clearly going to steamroll everyone and cannot lose. They find the immunity idol as Lisi and Dreams are sleeping and not paying attention. Now technically Mookie was the one who physically touched the idol and put it in his pocket so it is his. He tells everyone to their face that this is an alliance idol, but then a confessional tells us that this is just for him and I can see who from this alliance is already winning this game. They decide they won't tell Lisi they found it because she is unstable despite being called loyal in the last episode. Oh, and they won't tell Dreams because he can't keep it secret and might tell those on the other tribe come emerge. Smart plan so far, this is some 4D chess. Mookie then goes back to cover up the hole he dug up to get the idol. And Lisi says, aha, I found you looking for the idol. You can't pull a fast one on me. This morning, Mookie tried to be like a little discreet, flipping leaves and trying to play with the ground. And I was like, what, idol digging? And he had no choice but to say, uh, yeah. I'm like, dude, you're gonna have to wake up really, really early to fool an old cat like me. What's wrong with you? I have the idol and Lisi's still digging for it. She has no idea. And I'm gonna help her dig. <laughs> and that's the funny part. Dreams tells us that if they lose immunity, Lisi is going next. Obviously, she isn't one of the four horsemen. They then proceed to play 40 chess on the other tribe by strategically losing the reward challenge, and Dream suspects that they might be merging within the next day. Edgardo says, come emerge, we must keep a close eye on Dreams and make sure he doesn't flip to Cassandra. It is now time for immunity, and once again, Ravu tries a very bold strategy to get the upper hand on Moto going into the merge and he does not. Moto wins first round and the first point. Moto wins the second round. Moto wins immunity. Let's see if that pays off, Cotton. Lisi then takes it one step further and says, this tribe is a sinking ship. And she tells all of them, just vote me off. Please, I wanna be out of this game. Once again, it's hard to see, but the four horsemen are working some strategic magic here. But then Lisi changes her mind and says, actually, uh, keep me, dreams will flip on you, come emerge. I think that dreams will hop over to where Cassandra's at, not bring her over here. The thing is that it's not it's Dude, I can hang in here. Let's get rid of dreams. Lisi is so, so silly. So of course they vote her out. Lisi, the tribe has spoken. Episode 9 sees Alex finally give their alliance the epic name they need to go into the merge with. Each of us has proven our loyalty to the other by essentially giving up someone we were aligned with for the sake of the four, the four horsemen. Both tribes go to exile, get their new merge buffs, and they head back to the Moto Beach, where all of the niceties have just disappeared. Not that the four horsemen need that anyways. It may look dire on paper since they're down six to four in this merge situation, but trust me, they know what they're doing. They have the idol, and one smart play by them can still have them down five to four, just where they want the other tribe at. This is a complex survivor strategy after all. They go around and talk to each of the Moto members and basically learn that they want Boo gone as he is untrustworthy, which is great for them. With Dreams unable to keep secrets, Mookie makes another bold move that is sure to be nothing but a net win for them as an alliance. I didn't tell you, but we found the new idol on Rabbit. When Alex and Mookie told me that they had an immunity idol, I was kind of mad because they didn't tell me when they first found it. Amazing, I couldn't have done it better myself. But then the immunity challenge brings a twist with it. For some reason, the merge tribe is split into half and whichever half loses immunity goes to tribal while the other half is safe. Well, one of those two teams, the green team, has three of the four horsemen on it. So of course we know they're gonna win. Orange team! 
deserves immunity and reward. Well then, at Tribal Council, we know that the Four Horsemen want Stacy out since Boo isn't an option here. So Dreams decides to not vote with them and eliminate Michelle instead. Michelle, the tribe has spoken. Why didn't Dreams vote with them to get rid of Stacy? Who knows? But at least Michelle went and she was part of Moto. So now it is episode 10 and the four horsemen are down five to four, just like they planned. Their idol could really even things up if played correctly. Mistrust then begins to spread in the Alliance as Alex doesn't think Mookie will really share the idol with the rest of the Alliance if any of them are available to be voted out and Mookie is safe. Dreams then says, I don't know about this four horsemen Alliance. I kind of like the opposing syndicate Alliance too. Dreams then snitches on the Syndicate Alliance by telling Alex, hey, you're their target. Alex, man, they gonna, they gonna use your name. They probably put your name in the pot tomorrow. Your name gonna come up tomorrow. And you messed up. Alright, well, okay. What if now you see me and I don't got rid of one of them? It seems like Dreams has chosen a side, but uh, not so fast. This lone horseman is actually playing 5D chess, one step above the rest, as he then says, Mookie's got a new idol. Him and Alex got the idol. They found it again? Yes. And he's they they didn't grab. fight over it? He is aligned with everyone and yet no one, because Dreams cannot keep a secret and loves spreading what he has seen and heard to others for personal reasons. The four horsemen then decide that they're going to vote off Earl since they think he has the other idol and he will be completely surprised if they do this. However, Dreams knows about this and sees Mookie give Alex their idol. So of course, Dreams confesses, Mookie give Alex the idol. Literally anything anyone tells Dreams will be spread to the other side no matter what it is. No secret shall be kept and this is a masterful play by the Alliance as a whole. You may not see it yet, but you soon will. I personally have never seen such brilliance in my entire life. Stacy then says, if Alex has the idol, let's just vote off Edgardo. He won't see that coming. Earl says, solid plan, but don't tell Dreams. Silly Earl. Edgardo says, actually, we have a better plan. Dreams, Alex. Muki and I are voting for Cassandra. I think that's the smartest move. And also it'll be like, you know, have the hardest punch at Travel Council. This is an all or nothing move, but if it works out, it'll probably be one of the best moves ever. At Travel Council, it is time to vote and it is tense. If the Four Horsemen Alliance plays their idol correctly, they will even these numbers up four to four. So Jeff asks if anyone has an idol and... Alex is playing the Hidden Immunity Idol. Alex is immune from tonight's vote. First vote. Cassandra. Cassandra. That's three votes, Cassandra. Mookie. Edgardo. 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 Tenth person voted out and the fourth member of our jury. Edgardo. Edgardo, tribe has spoken. Oh dear, episode 11 starts and it is a sad, sad time. As it turns out, Dream's telling everyone everything is not great. He can't be in their alliance anymore since his 5D chess move only seems to hurt them. So the four horsemen quickly become two and Dream's is confused as to why they can no longer be friends with him. Why y'all ain't hanging out no more? Why do you think that? I don't know. Dude, you turned on us. No, I didn't turn on y'all. How do you figure? I didn't turn on y'all. How do you figure? There, was, I there were three, three votes for Cassandra. No, no, I didn't turn on y'all. That's not even in me. Who'd you vote for, Mookie or Edgardo? I vote Mookie. As it turns out, due to some spy work by Mookie, Earl does not have the idol, Yao Man does, and he has been keeping it a secret. Mookie and Alex then sneak off and talk privately about this and what they should do about it. Oh boy, they say, let's exploit Yao Man and make people not trust him. Brilliant. However, Mookie realizes Cassandra and Stacy have been behind them the whole time, listening in on their entire conversation. So they dash off to confront Yao Man before those women can ruin their perfect plan, and they threaten him. But then we hear from Cassandra and Stacy about all the details they overheard from Mookie and Alex. Cassandra and I happened to be sitting nearby where Mookie and Alex were having a conversation that they spoke about a few things that we didn't hear. We heard like words here and there. So then they went running back to camp. Mookie and Alex then work double overtime to expose Yao Man, but instead of everyone being mad at Yao Man, they somehow get mad at Mookie and Alex for being bad guys who threatened him. The plan really backfired, 
but I think that's all part of their big brain moves. I see it now. At Tribal Council, it is a split vote between two players and... 11th person voted out and the fifth member of our jury. Mookie. Mookie, Travis spoken. To go. I am unsure what the strategy was to get Edgardo and Mookie voted out, but I'm sure the remaining horseman, Alex, has something big up his sleeve. That's why he laid a vote on Mookie to get him out. Alex says the game plan is simple. I must win immunity. And at the challenge... Boo! Wins immunity! Oh. Oh dear. At Tribal Council, Alex pulls off the boldest move yet when they all go to vote and... Twelfth person voted out and the sixth member of our jury, Alex. Alex? Tribe spoken. Time for you to go. You know what? I get it now. With only dreams left, it is clear that he was secretly the one who was destined to win from this alliance the whole time. It all makes sense. How did I not see this before? So if we go forward to episode 13, we see a deal with him take place between Yao Man and Dreams himself, and the picture becomes far more clear as to what his game plan is. I want to see if I make a deal with the cop. Here's the deal. There's six of us left now, yes, right? Yes, it is. When there are four of us left, if you and I happen to be one of the four, if that happens, if you win the immunity for that round, you will give it to me. I promise the guy. Of course, get the truck, win the million. I love it. Then, in the finale, Dreams wins the final four immunity just as he promised Yao Man, and it's all coming together now. So at that tribal council, he follows through with this brilliant plan of winning the truck, the million, and frankly, America's heart. Dreams, you have the immunity necklace. It is yours to keep or to assign to anyone else you want. I'm, I'm gonna keep it. Another bold strategy by Dreams that I didn't see coming, but that's why I'm not part of the Four Horsemen Alliance. And frankly, I can see why the Four Horsemen wanted this guy over people like Rocky, Anthony, and Lisi. But for some reason, at the final Tribal Council, each of the Four Horsemen on the jury make Dreams look bad. But maybe they see something I don't. Ariel, how do you find out uh, who had the uh, immunity idol? Dreams. Did you tell anyone about the immunity idol that I found? Yes, I did. Would you consider that betrayal? No. You would lie, you backstab to succeed. Why would the rats and the snakes be the role models to the kids you and I are trying to help? That's a very strange turn of events, especially when none of them vote for him to win and he gets skunked by Earl. Well, huh. That was the rise and fall of the Four Horsemen, and I don't know about you, but I get it now. They did all of this to come across as a non-threat on a future all-returny season. It makes so much sense. I love it. But seriously, you guys, what do you all think about the Four Horsemen Alliance? Thanks for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.